Hello, Rob from Fountain Pen Journey. Happy New Year to your first video of um, 2020 um, and the first video of a whole new decade. Um, so, welcome to the 20s. Welcome to my Fountain Pen Journey. Um, it continues, as promised. Now, um, I'm going to start this year with a pen mail video. A whole bunch of stuff arrived today, rather unexpectedly. Some of it is running along the same sort of theme some of it isn't which is rather unusual for me i made a bit of an impulse buy um and well let's just get straight into the pens and see what we uh, what we have now first up we have got a pen pouch which uh both of these came from um chinese pen on etsy in their etsy shop so what's in here? It's a Moonman T1 in the green colour. Um, I was really, really stuck as to whether I wanted to buy one of these or not. Um, I have had quite a few Moonman pens recently and I really do like the way that they perform. They are. Chinese pens, but they are quite good quality, and they are um, a little bit more expensive than the cheap gin house and things, but I couldn't decide on this pen or not. It's It's got so many, many different elements to it that I actually thought, well, I haven't got anything like this in my um, collection, so I thought, well, do I get it, don't I get it, but I went for it. It is available in different colours. Uh, this is the green version. Uh, there is a very similar sort of blue version, which is very um, similar in colour uh, to the Delight Classic Alpha Blue that I showed you in a pen mail just before Christmas 2019. Um, so I thought, well, I don't really want that. There was a grey colour, but that looked a bit, it looks plasticky. Um, and there's a pink colour as well. They're all clear colourless demonstrators uh, with metal caps. Now, the metal cap is quite weighty um it certainly adds a lot uh, a lot of weight to the end of the pen let's unscrew it so we can have a look at the business end now moon man nib um i believe that this is a medium that i ordered and it has got a metal section which is sort of i'm gonna try and get this to focus sort of textured uh so it's not too slippery it's quite a decent length section um, the threads don't interfere with the grip at all it's round um, so plastic feed nothing really to say about that it is a piston filler now i saw these pens for sale a while ago didn't know whether to take the plunge or not but i decided to uh, to do so and i saw that roscoe's pens on ebay uh, were selling these pens at least twice um, the price that you can get these pens from China, which I thought was quite honestly a little bit cheeky. Um, am I impressed with this pen? Well, I haven't inked it up obviously yet, and I will do a full review once I have done that. I'm not a fan of metal and acrylic pens. Metal and acrylic together, it, it doesn't really do it for me. However, I was quite pleased to see that there's no um, threads actually on the acrylic, they are on the metal section. And it has got a plastic insert in there, black plastic insert, which has threads on. So that is what marries the cap to the pen. Um, piston filler. Now, Roscoe's pens, I don't know what he was playing at really because the description he put on certainly on his facebook page said that this is a piston filler it can be eyedroppered and it can also take um standard and international cartridges now as far as i'm concerned this does not unscrew you wouldn't want it to being a piston filler um so yeah i don't know what he's on about but yeah it's the moon man t1 is definitely a piston filler and it will have a decent capacity um it, the piston doesn't lock in place so that is something to be aware of um and it does post not very deeply not very securely 
and even though that cap is metal it doesn't add too much back weight to the pen because it sort of rests on your hand here obviously if you've got smaller hands it's going to possibly be a bit more back weighted for you um, but it is an attractive color and it is a different type of design to all the other pens that i have and it's unscrewing the there we go first design floor so the cap fits onto the piston filling knob doesn't actually go onto the barrel so if you're writing with this and you're accidentally sort of turning the cap in use you're going to expel ink all over the place so yeah be aware if you do decide to purchase this pen um the cap itself does seem to take quite a few turns let's just count them one two Yeah, I'd say just over two and a half turns to uncap the pen, and it is a comfortable length without posting the cap. Um, so yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting, but right now I wouldn't have said it was really worth the price that I paid, which was uh, I think around about twenty uh, twenty pounds. So wait and see. I will do a review of it in due course, but right now, first impressions are um, sort of... Mm, <laughs> it's not a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So I've got another pen here, in a pen sleeve that came from a uh, Chinese pen on Etsy. This was to add to my collection of Moonman M600S. Is now This is the purple version. I didn't have the purple version, and... I really do quite like purple pens and this had to be a purchase for me because I love the Moonman M600S. So the purple material is gorgeous. It's sparkly, it's chatoyant, there's different hues of purple in there. Really, really nice pen. You've seen a few of these before in my pens everyday carry pens uh, videos that I did a video that, that I did um, very recently um, so you can see that I actually really do love the Moonman M600S two-tone steel nib fine what can I say cartridge converter comes with a converter and yeah really really nice pens they don't really post very well they stupidly long a little bit loose not really for me but a good size now one of the reasons i like the moonman m600s is because it because it is quite a good or well it's a good quality copy stroke homage stroke rip off of the parker duo fold centennial um, which is a pen that I really admire. Now, I'm going to really annoy all the fountain pen purists and the uh, vintage pen uh, fans because this isn't a Parker Duo fold. It's a copy. Um, but I can't afford, nor do I want to buy, a full price, decent Parker Duo fold centennial to add to my collection. They're too expensive. I could buy one of those and that'll be the only pen mail and pen review <laughs> video that you see this year because i blow my pen budget on one pen which isn't something for me um so i am actually really pleased to be able to buy what is effectively it does the same job um but it comes in a range of attractive finishes like this purple and it's affordable so i have more things in this pen mail video which are going to offend the um the purists and the vintage pen collectors um and those who don't like chinese rip-offs because whilst this is a moon man copy of the parker duo fold centennial jin hao have released their version of the parker duo fold centennial very recently saw this um just before Christmas, 
And here it is. This is the Jinhao Duo Fold Centennial. They haven't even tried to name it anything else. They are blatantly trying to um, <clears throat> emulate the Parker Duo Fold Centennial, even in these colours. So this is the orange version, which is a sort of burnt orange terracotta brown colour. Very, very traditional looking pen. Now, I love this style. I like the Parker Duo Fold Centennial, and to be honest, I think it was probably one of the reasons that I got into the Shave and No Nonsense, because it is of a um, very similar sort of style with the flat tops and the black ends, and you know, it's, it's that type of pen. Um, so Jin Hao made this version. I'll just go through the brief uh, brief overview of the pen. Uh, we have the Jin Hao, get it the right way up, Jin Hao logo. On the top, and there we go with the horse, and there is the Jin Hao logo on the clip up there. Black, it's not quite a flat top, but black plastic cap. Uh, the clip does have a band down here on the cap band. We have got I'm trying to read this, I'm sure it just says Jin Hao. Yes, it does. Jin Hao. Nothing else on there. So they aren't actually stamping on here duo fold centennial, but this is the model to look for if you're interested in purchasing one of these. Barrel, slight taper, and a gold band with a black plastic finial. Unscrew cap. One. Two. Almost three full turns, so... Yeah, that's quite a thing. There's a uh, plastic... Is that... No, no, that's milled out of the cap. Not really seeing a cap liner as such. Two-tone steel nib. Section is, you know, good length. Fingers rest there. The thread's are way up here, and there's a bit, tiny step up to the barrel. But yeah, very comfortable to hold and it does flare out at the bottom of the section. And it is a nice sized pen. It's not huge, but it's, you know, a good average sized pen. Unscrew the thing and yeah, typical Jin Hao converter. will take standard international cartridges. And it similarly posts bit like the Moonman M600S. It is a bit more secure uh, in posting, but it's not great. It will wobble and, yeah, it's not a pen that I'd post. It's a silly length. So, posted, not for me. Unposted, it's a decent size. So, let's do a comparison of the Jin Hao Duo Fold Centennial and Mo the Moonman M600S. So, Plain top on the Moonman M600S. There is the gold cap um, finial, which retains the, uh, the clip on both pens. Now the clips are different. On the Jin Hao, we have this ball clip, which is nice. It's quite a de decent bit of spring. Decent bit of spring on the Moonman, but it is an arrow-shaped clip. And further down, we have a single gold coloured cap band at the base of the uh, Jin Hao cap, whereas the Moon Man has two gold bands and then the bottom of the cap there. Bottom of the pens. Yep, not a lot in it. Very, very similar. Yeah, very similar. So, as for the sizes, well, they are almost identical in size. The Moon Man is maybe a millimetre longer. And there are differences with the caps. So the Moonman M600S has a slightly longer cap and obviously the cap banding on both pens is slightly different. Um, uncapped, let's have a look at the pens. Now you will notice something here. They both have Jin Hao nibs. So, Moon Man, yep, you're borrowing Jim, Jin Hao nibs. Um, I did 
have a play around with these. Now, the sections are very, very, very similar in length. However, the Moon Man is a slightly smaller diameter section than the Jin Hao. I don't think, to be honest, you're really going to notice it, but it is there. So, keep the Jin Hao on the left for now. Put the two together and you can just see it is a little bit narrower on the uh, Purple Moon Man. And if we put the nibs next to each other, you'll see that the Moon Man is a couple of millimetres longer uh, than the Jin Hao. So they're not identical. It's not like they're the same uh, tooling, same components, all of them. Um, so they are two very different but very similar copies of the Parker Duo Fold Centennial. Now the Jin Hao pens, I'll pop the Moon Man out of the way for now. Jin Hao pens, we've talked about this. Now, up to now, as far as I'm aware, there are only three colour variations of the Jin Hao Duo Fold Centennial. So there's the orange. There is also this rather attractive grey colour, which is a sort of, I'd say it's a worn marbled grey. It's not brown uh, by any stretch, um, but it's definitely not a blue grey. It is coming out quite grey under the uh, camera lights, but it's um, it's much more of a warm and marble sort of colour, and it is an attractive um, plastic. Don't know what sort of plastic material, um, could be acrylic, but yeah, you, you, you see it's all <clears throat> very much um, very much the same, you know. These are classic designed pens. And I also bought the third one, which is white. However, it's more of a um, more of an ivory colour with some sort of... Uh, it's not marbling, it's more striations in the material. I'll try and get this to focus. Focus, come on. Yeah, it's struggling a bit with the, uh, the contrast, but move these out of the way. So, um, yeah, there is this white version as well. So if you're after a more traditional colour than the um, Moon Man M600S's, which usually are quite attractive colours, um, then the Jin Hao Duo Fold Centennial pens are a very nice looking alternative. So I'm really happy with these. Very affordable. These Jin Hao's are much cheaper than the, I mean, they're less than half the price of the Moon Man M600S. Um, so I think I paid something in the region of six or seven pounds for each one of these pens, including shipping from China. So they all turned up and yeah, very, very, very happy with those. So there goes my pen mail for the. There's more. Don't don't hang up yet. <clears throat> for the uh, Jin Hao Duo Fold Centennials. Now I have got one more package here, which came in this absolutely massive bubble wrap envelope, bright orange from Korea, South Korea. I must add. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So let's get this out, because I was actually quite surprised at how big the box was. Lamy Special Edition. There we go. So, massive box. I'll just use this pen as a comparison. So, huge, 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 huge box. So what is in this box? Well, it's a Lamy Safari. Now... I love the Lamy Safari. I do have a bit of a love-hate relationship with it because when I first started my fountain pen journey, I hated the design of it. Didn't like the looks. Bought one in a job lot of pens from Europe. Tried it out and really, really loved it. And I find that when the nibs are good, they're great. 
writing pens, really love them. So I've ended up buying various different colours, getting a fairly decent collection of Lamy uh, Safari pens. And they did do, many years ago, a brown um, version of the Lamy Safari, which is stupidly expensive. And then they also did the Lamy Safari Special Edition, which was, I believe, a South Korea exclusive, or certainly the Far East exclusive, uh, brown version of the Lamy Safari, in association with uh, Line. Now there's the little brown bear. So it's Lamy Cross Line. That seems to be how they advertise it. And Line, if you don't know, is a messaging service, an online messaging service, similar to WhatsApp, um, various other uh, platforms out there, and it's very popular in the Far East. Don't ask me why certain cultures, regions, uh, choose um, certain messaging apps over others, and the Line app and platform is very, very popular over there. So they have gone in conjunction with Lamy to produce these special editions. So on the box we have Back to the Basics, the fifth encounter of Lamy and Line Friends. Now the Line Friends are these two little characters. There's a brown bear and a yellow duckling. Um, it also says a quality present to make your working environment extra impressive. Line Friends, Lamy logo and stuff. And designed by Line Friends. Copyright line and Lamy, line friends, and yes, even on the back. So, huge box. Let's slide the lid off and show you what is inside. Oh, I just popped him out. So, in here we've got an insert. So, we've got the Lamy Safari brown pen, brown plastic pen. Um, Rather interesting from the point of view that I'm guessing this is a meat. Oh, extra fine. That's an unusual uh, unusual nib size to actually find in these pens. And it is a brown nib, which is rather, uh, rather unusual. It doesn't look particularly black to me. So, yeah, that is, that's quite a surprise. Um, we've got the brown cardboard retainer on there and a blue I'm guessing this is a blue oh no black black Lamy cartridge in there so that's not installed and the spacer there is to stop the um, barrel puncturing forcing the uh, cartridge down into the uh, section and piercing it so that's why that's there if you weren't aware so there we go Lamy Safari in brown also in this box, there is another um, Lamy cartridge and a converter. Didn't know what I was getting with this. Um, so it is, it is quite nice to uh, see what's inside. Now, this little chappy here, this little brown bear, um, is designed. He's got this little slit and the idea is that you slide him onto the clip so... He sits on your, on the clip of your pen, and um, yeah, very very cute. So I was kind of taken with the whole cuteness of uh, of this little um, this little, little chap, and the fact that it's a Lamy Safari Brown. So I shall pop him back in his little nest there, and also in here we have the bigger version, or a full version of the uh, little brown line there. Looks a little bit sad. Very cute. Um, and the idea is that he just sits on your desk. Now, there is more to this, so I shall remove the foam insert. And pop the box over there. And there is this rather heavy duty tray. It's got it's got a rubberized base, so that's a non-slip base. And on here we have very faintly embossed Lamy and the little line bear logo. So yep, non-slip 
desk accessory. Muscle instruction booklet, which shows you how to set out your, I suppose it's a pen, wow, it's magnetic, didn't expect that. <laughs> right, okay, so this little chap's got a magnetic bottom, and uh, so he, oh, it's only, uh, it's only one place, that's interesting. Okay, so there's a magnet in there. No, it's only in that one place. It's quite a strong magnet, actually. So he sits there, and then you uh, simply leave your pen like that, which is, I suppose it's quite a cute little uh, desk accessory. Um, I really do quite like it. So, brown special edition. Um, full colour brochure. And it says... Okay, Lamy, world-class writing instrument brand produced only in Heidelberg, Germany, has met line friends for the fifth time. Now, I know that these pens go for a stupid price when they are very rarely available on eBay. Um, the pens, the brown pens, Lamy Safari pens do, but when you've got the whole line package, um, yeah, the, the prices are quite high um so what uh what can i actually say right well i didn't pay full whack for it because these uh, i thought these might have been new old stock uh because it was advertised as being brand new and it really was i mean i had to take all the wrapping and cellophane off and everything else to find out what was inside the um inside this box um so the whole package is new so I'm guessing that they are redoing these and I think the duckling version uh, is also part of this fifth uh, edition special edition and it says here meet our special edition which includes a paperweight and pen tray it will ma make your desk wittier and your work exceptional okay so it, right this is the magnet part of it okay so you put your papers in there and he sits on them and stops them blowing away, which is no, that's quite good. Um, I don't know whether this is going to make my work exceptional. If it does, I'll be quite surprised. Um, and different languages in here. Line friends, and we've got yeah, instructions, brown accessory, brown figure. Oh, it tells you there's a magnet there. Kind of figured this out. Tells you how to fit the uh, little bare face onto the clip. How to fill the pen with ink if you don't use the um, ink cartridges. How to clean it. And how to use the converter. So, there is the full package. With the pen and another cute little bear. And that's... <laughs> I think quite a good way of starting 2020 with quite a nice, uh, nice little cute, little cute bear and um, a brown pen and some Parker Dewar fold um, rip-offs. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching. Um, there will be reviews coming, and I've got all sorts of plans for 2020. Loads of different things because I want to do, um, want to talk a little bit more about inks that I use. Uh, because I know that some of my uh, viewers do comment and say, hey, that's a beautiful ink. So probably go through some of my um, ink notes, things like that. So you'll see a few more ink reviews as well as pen reviews and pen mail videos and other fountain pen related stuff. So stay tuned for that this year. Hit the subscribe button if you want to get notifications when I put the new videos out. I don't want to teach you how to suck eggs, you know how to do that. But if you are interested, then that's one way you'll uh, you'll find out first about what new pens I have bought and what's arrived in the post. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.